elected officials at the local, state, and federal level, and several local referenda also. We need everyone to make sure their vote counts and their voice is heard. And because of this pandemic, we also want to make sure that you can vote safely. If you still have your absentee ballot, fill it out and return it as soon as you are able. At this point, we don't recommend mailing it because that is, it has to get there by 8 p.m. on election day. Instead, you can return it to your clerk's office in an, in an official uh, ballot drop box and early voting locations. You can also find out if you can drop it, your ballot off at your polling place on election day by reading the instructions that came with your ballot. Make sure you know all the options near you to turn to turn in your ballot by visiting myvote.wi.gov or by calling your local clerk's office. If you plan to vote in person, don't forget to mask up, practice social distancing, bring your photo, photo ID, and, you need, and if you need to register, your proof of residence, and maybe take some hand sanitizer and your own black or blue pen if you can. And if you're heading to the polls, make sure to be kind, patient, and express some gratitude, especially this, express some gratitude to our poll workers and our clerks who are helping to, to do everything they can to make sure things run smoothly and safely. In order to help support our local election off, officials and to ensure they have enough hands on deck, we will also have about 400 Wisconsin National Guard members helping out as poll workers on Tuesday. Just as they always do, the Guard has stepped up when we need them, and we are grateful for their service. Yesterday, I was excited to also announce we are expanding our community testing efforts across the state with 71 new free community testing sites in 56 counties and seven tribal nations. These sites have the capacity to test about 48,000 people each week. Testing is obviously a critical part of our state's response to this pandemic, and we want to make it easier for those who need to get a test to get a test. Distance is one barrier that we can do something about, and one of the ways to address this issue is to offer more testing in more places for more Wisconsinites. If you have any symptoms of COVID-19 or have been in contact with somebody who has tested positive, first of all, avoid contact with others and get tested. And make sure to let any of your close contacts know so that they can take precautions as well. But I also wanna be absolutely clear here. Testing is not a silver bullet for stopping this virus. It's a supplement, not a replacement for all the mitigation efforts we need to have in place to stop the spread and save lives. On Monday, Wisconsin surpassed 200,000 positive cases of COVID-19. As Secretary Palma has said before, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And that seems to continue to be true as our daily numbers are alarming. Our seven-day average of new daily cases is 4,128. Two months ago, it was 684. In just these two months, the seven-day surge average has increased over 500%. And our seven-day average on daily deaths is higher than it ever has been before. Make no mistake, folks, every time you choose to stay home, every time you decline a party invitation, every time you get to take out instead of dining in, and every time you make another sacrifice after months of sacrifices, you help stop the spread. The choices you make every day could be the difference between preventing a hospitalization or even saving a life. So please, we ask everyone to stay safe, safer at home. In the spring, our efforts to stay home save lives. And we are in a far different and more dire situation now than we were then. Limit your travel to essential errands like a weekly grocery trip, picking up prescriptions, or going to vote. As we head into Halloween weekend, a time when many would normally be out and about in a different sort of face mask, please stay home. Avoid any in-person parties or get-togethers. Don't go to other homes or have people in your own home who are outside of your immediate households. Go trick-or-treating virtually. Host a costume party or scary movie night on Zoom. Or visit a drive-through haunted house. 
Kathy and I will miss ha handing out candy at the residence for trick-or-treaters this year. But we hope you stay healthy and safe, healthy and safe this Halloween and celebrate safely by staying at home. With that, I will now turn things over to Secretary-Designee Andrea Palm for her update. Andrea. Thanks, Governor. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us again. Since yesterday, uh, we have added 5,096 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 to our total here in Wisconsin. Our seven-day average of new cases is now at 4,231. One month ago, it was 2,334. Uh, and two months ago, it was 696. In these two months, our seven-day average has increased by more than 500%. Today, our total number of confirmed cases stands at 220,092. 44% of our cases have been con confirmed in the past month, 66% in the past two months. Hospitals in every region of our state are experiencing staffing strains, all while COVID-19 hospitalizations continue to rise. We currently have over 1,400 patients hospitalized with COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Our ICU beds continue to fill and our alternate care facility continues to work with hospital partners and accept new patients. We've now lost 1,972 Wisconsinites to this virus. That's uh, an addition of 24 deaths since yesterday. Families and friends across the state are feeling this loss for their loved ones, and our hearts certainly go out to them. We owe it to them, to our friends and family, and to ourselves to do all that we can to stop the spread of COVID-19. We need to stay home. We need to wear our masks and physically distance. We need to practice good hand hygiene. And if you have symptoms or have been exposed to COVID-19, please get tested. Call your health care provider or go to dhs.wisconsin.gov slash testing to find a community testing site near you. After you get tested, quarantine while you wait for your results. Isolate if you test positive and please notify your close contacts to encourage them to get tested and quarantine as well. If you test negative, continue to monitor your symptoms. Testing is not what stops the spread. Testing is what informs you of our plan as a state and of your actions as individuals. What we do after testing is what matters, and the safest choice is to stay home. Staying home is how we flattened the curve back in March and April, and staying home is how we can do it again. Thank you for doing your part to stop the spread and to save lives. Thank you. We'll now take your questions. A reminder to maintain audio quality to please keep your phones on mute until it's time to ask your question. And we'll begin this morning with Gretchen Elke from the Associated Press. Gretchen. All right, we just heard from state health officials there. Governor Tony Evers urging people to stay home, not to go out unless it is absolutely Gretchen necessary. Uh, they also just told us that 5,096 new uh, coronavirus cases, new confirmed cases since yesterday, 24 new deaths. Uh, if you want to continue to watch this, we will have it on 12.2. And we'll have updates on our website, WISN.com. We now rejoin regular programming. COVID-19 in the state of Wisconsin. Um, I know that nationally we're seeing kind of a drop off in the death rate despite the increase in cases. I was wondering if we're seeing the same thing here in Wisconsin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, our death rate sits uh, just under 1% right now. Uh, but uh, Dr. Westgard, do you want to um, say anything about what we're seeing in that data? Yeah, I would say as the, as the number of cases has increased and um, the larger population is exposed to the virus uh, over time the what we would call the case fatality rate the proportion of positive cases that have died uh, has gotten lower so initially when older individuals people in hospitals and nursing homes were a higher fraction of our cases the, the case fatality rate was high now that we have cases in all age groups and younger people in particular the percentage of people positive die but the number of cases is rising. So the death toll is increasing. Um, the important thing to understand about this virus is that there's a wide variety in how the, in the risk of severe disease, 
but anyone who's infected can become severely ill. And we've, we've recorded deaths in all age groups over 20. So no one is, um, that, we can, that we know of is immune to the virus or is, partic or is completely um, protected from severe disease, although the, the actual risk varies quite a bit in older people. So I think the, the, the short lesson is deaths are on the rise because cases are on the rise is the important take home. Thank you, Rob. Now to Sierra Trojan from Fox 11 in Green Bay. Sierra? Good morning, and thank you for taking my question. Are you planning to contact Trace from President Trump's Green Bay event to this today? So we, um, contact tracing, uh, right, it is about, um, it starts with a positive case, not with, a, with an event or a function or a, um, a, a location. Um, and so uh, uh, anybody who tests positive, right, we are encouraging uh, them uh, to notify their close contacts, uh, to encourage them to quarantine and get tested, uh, that they themselves be vigilant about their isolation and quarantine while they wait for their test results. Um, uh, but recognizing, right, that our contact tracers uh, across the state and here at the state level uh, have more work than they can manage, uh, we, are, we are anxiously um, encouraging those who get tested to help us with messaging um, uh, to their own contacts as we uh, work our way through the, through the large caseload that we have. But right, it speaks more broadly um, uh, to, uh, to our gathering um, behavior, right? We, we need to do all that we can to stop the spread, and that means limiting our contact uh, to people who are in our immediate household. Uh, that means uh, don't go to small gatherings. It means don't go to large gatherings um, and, and do everything that we can through those actions uh, to stop the spread so that our health care systems, our local public health infrastructure, our contact tracers uh, uh, can get to a place where we've got the bandwidth to do this really important work. Thank you, Sierra. Now to Will Keneally from PBS Wisconsin. Will? Hi, uh, thanks for taking the question. I was wondering, Governor, if you could update us on any conversations you might be having with legislative Republicans. Uh, I've had no recent conversations with uh, legislative Republicans. I follow the news. I, I saw a clip that um, uh, Speaker Voss had indicating that uh, he's interested in meeting, so I'm interested in meeting with him. I don't think the meeting's been set up to my knowledge. Thank you, Will. Now to Adam Rogan from the Journal Times in Racine. Adam. Hi, uh, I believe this question would be for the governor. Um, bounce off that last question, actually. Robin Voss has talked about, um, he, I think, misstated last week that you had $75 million you could spend, but that, that you haven't. And then I learned the other day that you actually are not able to spend that money from the first coronavirus bill. Can you walk through why that $75 million wasn't spent, as obviously there's been a, a in some ways, not enough response to this coronavirus pandemic? Well, we received the coronavirus uh, money from the federal government uh, at, the, at the same, about at the same time. So the, the choice was, first of all, the, the, uh, the expiration date on the $75 million from, uh, from the state uh, was about to expire with, with, my, uh, uh, with my order. And second of all, uh, given the dire state of our state budget, uh, it would seem prudent to uh, uh, spend the federal money first, which we did. Thank you, Adam. Now to Eric Gunn from Wisconsin Examiner. Eric? Hi, thank you for taking the question. I'm interested in knowing the thinking behind the decision to take the mask order a lawsuit uh, to go straight to the Supreme Court as opposed to waiting for the summary judgment from the uh, lower court that the uh, plaintiff's law lawyers had originally asked for this week were uh, further through the appeal process. Thank you. Sure. This is Ryan Nelson to and Eric, and I'd be happy to answer that. So uh, it was actually in the, the case brought by the Tavern League, so regarding limitations on public gatherings. 
The reason for that is, um, you know, it's a strategic decision based on uh, where that case was situated that we would get a more expeditious final result from the Wisconsin Supreme Court because that's where the case was going to end up eventually anyway. Thank you, Eric. Now to Matt Piper from the Sheboygan Press. Matt? Hi, yeah, thanks for this call. Um, this isn't a very specific question, I suppose, but I'm just wondering um, whether it has surprised you in your kind of internal conversations about this that the increase is so sustained uh, and, and whether, you know, back in September and early October, you thought maybe that we were nearing a peak based on some of the age group trends um, and, and I guess why you believe that it has continued um, to grow. Um, I'll, um, I'll let Dr. Ostergaard dig in a little on this. I would say um, more broadly, Matt, right, what we know about this virus is um, absent uh, vigilant um, mitigation, right? The, the strategies that we know work socially distancing, mask wearing, good hand hygiene, um, this, this virus does its thing and it does it very well, it's very infectious. Um, and so uh, it, it, it is teaching us that lesson again and again and again here and across the country as we see cases escalate and we see the number of uh, contacts from each case growing as people are less vigilant about those things like social distancing and gatherings um, and the mitigation strategies that we know work. And so um, I think we can't expect this virus to behave any other way than it knows to behave, which is to spread uh, as quickly as it can at every opportunity. Um, and it speaks more broadly to um, to doing the things we know that work to stop the spread and doing them now, doing them yesterday, doing them last week, um, because as we see this escalation, uh, um, it, it is taxing our, our systems. It is taxing public health. It is taxing our healthcare systems. We now have patients at the ACF, uh, right? That was our ultimate insurance policy, and we are, we are utilizing it now. It is not where we want to be, um, and, and so we control um, this virus in as much as we work together to stop the spread by doing the things that we know work, by staying home, by wearing a mask, by physical distancing, by good hand hygiene, by doing the stuff that we know um, are good public health tactics to stop the spread of this uh, disease. But I, I don't know, Dr. Westergaard, if you want to jump in with any, any more detail on the data. I think you described it well. It's not at all surprising in the absence of very strenuous effort to, pre to prevent it, that this virus spreads throughout the population as fast and as quickly um, and as widespread as it is. We know this is an extraordinarily contagious virus and left to its own devices, it will affect 70 to 80% of people in a community. So is it surprising that it can do that? No. Uh, personally, my, I'm frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and, and disappointed that we've been as, as had as low success or as, as we failed as much as we have to slow it. But I think I, I say that because I think it's important to understand that there's still time to turn this around. We know what to do to reduce transmission, to bend the curve, and we need to do it. So I think if we can look at these numbers and, and think about how this is not surprising, and given what we know about how many people have been infected already from some antibody surveys, the worst case scenario is that it's really just getting started. It's probably fewer than 10% of Wisconsin residents have been infected, which means 90% are still unexposed and susceptible. So the expectation, if we don't do very aggressive things to slow the spread, is that this could continue and get worse. And I, But I think it's so important that we understand we can actually turn the corner. We can do the things. It's been shown in many other places that even when, when infection rates are high, that we can turn it around. But we have to really get organized and really do this well very soon, or we would not be, if we don't do that, it would not be surprising for numbers to continue to get worse. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. N now to Jessica Van Egren from Up North News. Jessica. Yes, I'd like to kind of um, 
expound upon what Dr. Westergaard just said um, in connection with statements made by Speaker Voss last week. Um, what can immediately be done given the number of court case challenges um, when you talk about the fact that 10% of Wisconsin's population has been infected, but we still have the ability to turn this around. We still have the ability to, you know, get this under control. I guess what immediately um, can be done given those obstacles you guys have been facing? Thanks. Yeah, and there have been plenty, plenty of obstacles. But just the other day, the, the speaker talked about uh, uh, the need for more testing. And we agree. We want to, that's why we're doing what we're doing. But in turn, we have always led the, con the country in, in the amount of testing per, per person. Uh, I received, and I know not everybody can see this little report from the uh, federal government. If you can see this, there's a green area there. And those green areas mean you're doing good. And that's in testing. We have always been in that green area in testing because we have prioritized that. I heard the speaker say that. We need, to, we need to ramp that up, and we are ramping that up. I also heard the speaker say that we, meaning the Republicans, encourage mask wearing. Well, encouraging and, and, but not doing doesn't sell in my book. That is not leadership. How can, we, how can we have the people of Wisconsin believe that mask wearing is important when we see the president, he's coming into Green Bay this today, right? I'll bet you there'll be a, more than a handful of people in that crowd that aren't wearing a mask. We will hear once again that this is, uh, this is, a, this is not a good thing. And I'll just use this prompt here just for a second. We receive this every week. See where it says, see the red pieces? That's bad. That means we're not doing, that's... If we have not rounded any corner. So if we want to do this right and stop it in its tracks, people have to wear a freaking mask. Simple as that. And how can we convince people to do that? We need to have our leaders wearing a mask. When they have fundraisers, as they have, and you see the pictures of 100 plus people in a small room, no one wearing a mask. That sends a message that it's not important. Please, leaders, we need to send a message that wearing a mask is the most important part of this equation. And if, we're, if we are not going to um, understand that, we will continue to struggle in the state of Wisconsin. We need to wear masks. 